we're going to go ahead and create um, a simple piston and crank mechanism here in, in a small housing that we can practice our assemblies with. So we'll go through the build of it first and we're going to start with the casing. So if we sketch on a top work plane, I've changed my workspace units already. So we'll just go over where that is. So three lines at the top, workspace units and into millimetres and that'll save you a lot of hassle moving forward. So once we're into that top work plane, we can click on sketch and draw our rectangle out. So select the rectangle tool, click, I always start it from the origin, and then drag it out and click to finish. Once we've done that, we're going to use the dimension tool, click on the side and click further away. We're going to make that 250 millimeters and we're going to make the width in there, um, do, let's make it 80 millimeters. And try and bear in mind that we need to remember these so we're making them nice round figures to remember. So we can finish that, extrude it, we'll click on there and we can extrude that up 150 mil. So it's fairly tall. In fact we'll take that down very slightly to 120 mil. We can always come back and change it if we need to. We're then going to use the shell feature and we want it to be shelled through on both sides the thickness of 10 mil will be absolutely fine. So it is fairly chunky. We're then going to create the positions where our pistons are going to be coming through. So on the top of the object, we're going to create a sketch and we're going to draw a circle. We'll pattern our circle and our extrude for the hole. So we only do the one at this stage. We'll dimension it so we know exactly where it is and what we're doing. And we're going to dimension that as a 50 millimeter diameter. The distance from this front edge can be 50 millimeters too, and then the distance from the side edge is 40 to make sure it's in the center. Okay, we can finish that at that point. We can then extrude, select the circle, make sure the arrow is going to correct way, and we've selected remove at the top. That will then delete that through. We only need it to be 10 millimeters, so it's not going too far. And once we've done that, we'll just check its work, check that we can see through the hole all the way around. So I'm happy with that one at the moment. I'm going to now look at it from the top because what I want to do is pattern that circle to see if we can fit three evenly spaced pistons across the top of that face. So we're going to use the linear pattern. So the linear pattern is the one along the top that looks like a square where one's an odd colour out. Four squares together, one is white. So select linear pattern. We don't want to pattern a part. We've only got one part. That's the whole the whole shell at the moment, we want to pattern a feature. So we're going to select feature from the drop down. It's the extrude that we're concerned with and the direction is any line in the direction we want the circles to move. So we're going to click the side edge. You can see it's moved it up which is the right way and then we can play about with the distance. 50 is going to leave it touching on the side so we need to do it more than 50. So let's try 100 and see where that leaves us. That's too far so let's bring it down to 80 and if we put three straight in we can see how they're fitting. So we can see that that distance there is too small. So we can take it down to 75. And you can see that that now is nice and evenly spaced all the way through. And if you rotate that around using your right click button on your mouse, you can see that it's done the trick. Click tick to finish. Once you've done that, the next holes we want are for where the handle for the crank is going to poke out that we can turn in our animation and then a hole on the other side to line it up as well. So in real life, that would be where it's being pinned into position. So we'll click on the left hand face. We're going to start a new sketch and we're going to draw a circle. And this circle, we want to make sure it's in the, in the center because that's roughly where we're going to put our part. So it's in the center compared to this edge, which we know is 40. And then in terms of distance from the bottom, we're going to make it slightly more towards the base than we are at the top to give the pistons that little bit of room for moving around. So if we make it 50 for now, that will do the trick. Press down the tick, extrude, we we'll select the hole, we're going to flip the direction the other way, make sure remove is selected at the top. I'm going to change blind to go through all parts. So it goes through all and you can see it's lining up perfectly on that other side. So we can finish that with a tick and you can see that holder now is ready. So that's our first part as the holder. To recognize that we've finished that first part, we're going to right click on part one and we're going to rename it as the casing. And it's always good practice to rename. You can also rename everything in a features list if you have time. If you're working on a collaborative, a project that you know is eventually going to become more and more complex, 
um, and you want somebody else to be able to review it as well, it's really good practice to rename everything in that list. Good luck.